Hello everybody, welcome to the sound test room. Today we are taking a look at the Roland Geyer. We are going to take a deep dive, deep, deep dive, deep dive tutorial. For this, the Geyer does a lot of stuff that's not kind of obvious. And um, there's quite a few shift functions and things like this. So we'll have a look at those as well. And there's a phrase recorder and there's loads and loads of different arpeggios and stuff. Hope you were all okay today. Um, hi, Sai, Stephen. XP50 player, uh, anyone else who's watching, hello. Um, and please strike the like as well, <laughs> thank you very much. So yeah, you can get pretty much any kind of analog sound out of the guy as well, so. It's a kind of Vangelis-y. Lead. So where do we start? Let's, let's just look at the basics. You have three independent synth engines. Um, and these are really good price at the moment as well. You can pick up a guy for, you know, pretty reasonable money. Uh, and they're quite powerful, you know. Um, you have a D-beam thing here, which I'll show you how that works in a bit. Then you have your engine select section here. So tone one, tone two, and tone three. Tone one is all this, tone two is all this, and tone three is all that as well. But it's like three layers of different synth, if you like. Okay. Then you have your LFO section here, and you have you have all your standard shapes. You know, you have a, a triangle, sign, a, like a sawtooth, a square, a, a sample and hold, and a random. Here you have your modulation for your pitch, filter, and amp, and then you can also fade that modulation in. I'll show you all this stuff. You have your oscillator. Your oscillator has, uh, again, it has like source, square, uh, pulse width, and then uh, like a triangle, sine, noise, and super saw. But each of those also has three variations on its basic wave. Okay, so yeah. And then you have, uh, down here you have pulse width, and then pulse width modulation as well. And the pulse width modulation is controlled by the rate knob there okay now i'll show you this then you have your basic pitch and then your detune then you have your sync set like so if i was to go this nice poly sound we can sync this now to oscillator two and then what will happen then is because it's synced to oscillator two oscillator two you see what's happened there you see we'll turn them off they're orange, so they're synced. What will happen now, if we change the pitch now, uh, the detune, it's not going to actually detune the sound. We're just modulating oscillator 2 with the pitch of oscillator 1. And then you have ring mod as well. Works the same way. You should definitely get a guy uh, DG tunes. Uh, you'll probably want one after I've finished. Anyway, then we, then we have pitch modulation as well. We can get into that in a sec, uh, but it's kind of standard. You go up and then it will come down in a in a, a ramping value if you like. Then we move on to our filter. And our filter has um, low pass, high pass, man pass, uh, peak peak filter, and a, and a complete filter bypass. We also have twenty four dB per octave and twelve dB per octave slope. So twelve dB per octave is, is usually brighter. Twelve dB is I'm on t like twenty four dB now to get that nice mellow sound. But if I was to swap it just to twenty four dB now. See, we've added some higher end harmonics in. Put it back to 24 for this sound. So then you have your cut off, your resonance, and your key follow. Right, I've got my key follow quite high open at the this end. It's brighter, so it'll get considerably darker as it tracks down. 
But if we were to just tap around the bottom end of the keyboard and then open the key track towards the bottom, and then now it'll be brighter at the bottom and duller at the top. So we'll put the key track back to where I was at about there. Then you have your filter envelope. Uh, of course, you need envelope depth for the filter envelope to work. We can get into that as well. Finally, you go into your, your amp section, your volume section. So this is the main level of uh, each of the tones independently. Uh, so if I was to select one and two, because I can edit globally, I can turn them all down via this. And that means it allows me to make global edits to the sound, like for the ADSR, etc. if I wanted to do that or just selecting one or two, just turns the volume down for one. Now we're only hearing two. And now we're only hearing one. So these are more or less the same sound. Now moving after the amp envelope, you have your effects section and the effects are global. So whatever you decide to put in on anything will be on all three tones. So there's a bit of reverb on this, that's all. And you'll also hear that there's some uh, glide portmento. They've called it on here. So um, if we switch portmento off, we're not gonna... But if we switch portmento on. Now there are several ways to... Uh, uh, just the portmento as well. Hi Sam. Um, several ways to adjust the portmento on the Gaia. Okay, there are actually three ways. For, well, you hold portmento and you will see this note flash. Maximum portmento would be going all the way and highlighting all eight. Or sort of anywhere in between. Or you can get much finer portmanteau control by using the fade time here. So if I, you can actually see it actually, if I switch this down like this. Very cool. So if you want your more traditional fader type control over the portmanteau, you can if just by holding portmanteau. And of course, as soon as you let go of portmanteau, none of these controls will have, will have been changed per that sound, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> Octave up is kind of self-explanatory. Transpose, we can transpose in semitones, obviously. Switch transpose on, and let's transpose it up one. So that's transpose an octave, but if we hold transpose and then go, we've now transposed that to a C sharp and B becomes the C. Or go down or transpose down. And what's nice is, look, if you've got transpose set like this, and you switch transpose off, you can play along like this, look. <clears throat> If I switch transpose, it's automatically transposed to the last transpose setting I had, which is super handy if you're at a gig and you need to transpose the key sort of thing, so really fastly. So that's transpose and different ways that you can use that in the portmanteau. Key hold. Key hold is good, you can just 
hold the key and then make make adjustments to suit but key holder is much better on arpeggios and this next patch here is an arpeggio which is very cool there are 64 different arpeggio patterns in here it does have a phrase recorder but it's not brilliant but it's okay i suppose you can record up to eight bars of a phrase <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's have a mess with this arpeggio. So let's play this. We can hold it anyway, but let's hold it there. And let's put key hold on. So with, with key hold on and having the arpeggiator in latch mode or key hold mode, you can then just kind of jam away with doing that kind of stuff. All right, so the effects, right? The effects are quite quite good. They're really, I mean, they sound good, but they're really cool. So let's set up an initialized patch. So let's choose one that's... These are my. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. So this would be user bank C, and it's patch number seven. And I'm just going to press cancel and write. And now we've got a an initialized patch, which is one oscillator on a sawtooth wave. Now, of course, the, the the best way to do this, the best way to do this with any synth as well, uh, uh, analog synth, is just to reset the panel settings. But just for now, the, the three tone engines here, so we can switch this one on and this one off. That's a square wave. And then you've got a sine wave. These are the defaults for the three tone engines. You can turn them all on and you'll hear them all. But let's just turn that one off turn that one off and just concentrate on this one i like to set the the panel back to the default state as well so that when you first start to build the patch what you see is correct on on on, on the screen so it starts off with there's no effects applied the effects button is on but there are no effects okay so it's going to quickly build a patch but we'll set this first uh, attack zero, we can leave decay, uh, decay zero, release zero, sustain full. So that's a basic organ tone already. But if I was to go, okay, we'll turn the amp volume full up for this to start. Envelope depth, we will set in the middle at zero. And then, well, it won't matter now what we do to these, but we can set them the same as the filter if we want. But as long as the envelope depth in this is zero, nothing will happen when you mess around with these in the filter. Okay, we'll set the filter. It's a low pass filter and it's on a 12 dB slope. We can set it on 24 dB. 
open it all the way up and close the resonance all the way down set the key track to the central position we do the same here envelope depth is notched to the center so it's zero a d the envelope for there will set the pulse width there again this wouldn't make any difference unless it was on a pulse wave and the, again with this, um, we can set the filter depth, the amp depth, and the pitch depth all the way to central, which is zero. And then you've got the choice of either going plus or minus with any of those. Now, also, there is a way to get it to, you won't hear this, but there's a way to get it to pan the amp to pan and what you do to do that is you hold shift and then you move the amp controller now you can't hear it but it's actually like a tremolo it's panning left and right so we can just bring that back down to zero and that's back to normal in normal mode it would just do that and then you have pitch depth of course we which you can go nuts with and you have different shapes as well and you can tempo sync it if you want tap tempo you can clock this up it's dead easy and get the info from another source if you like because there's no like digital display you have to tap and guess sign kind of thing okay so let's quickly look at the d-beam because some people asked how the the d-beam actually works it's it's pretty cool <laughs> it's a no it's novel but it's cool so pitch we hit pitch and then volume actually volume once nice if you want to do a uh, uh, theremin type sound an effect sign a, a sign is you hold the effects control okay and then you move any of the faders or sliders, for instance, the cut, like the cutoff, like that. And then, probably need some. Uh... There you go, some cutoff applied before it would actually work. So the different shapes. Here's your rate and it will go super fast. Not quite into audio rate, but fast enough. Different shapes then. What's nice is though you do, you do you do have a fade time. So if we set up something actually quite sensible, maybe on a triangle, extra triangle be fine. And we we want that to fade in instead of being immediate. So that's how you do that. You can use a fade time on on any on on any of the. You can use it on the filter depth if you want to, or the amp depth. Okay, so the the pitch bend. Let's do the pitch bend because again, this is another hidden feature. 
Uh, Doug uses uh, final. Oh, yeah, I, I demoed it years ago. I haven't used it. I haven't used it for years. Final touch. Oh, it's T Rex now. I don't know if I master him, but um, you'll see that it's going up. Uh, basically two semitones. So from that C to that D, and that's the default. But we can set it to actually go up up to two octaves in in pitch and again we we do this by holding shift moving the mod wheel uh, moving the modulation wheel either left or right it doesn't matter you can move it left and you'll see that the octave up and down will flash like this so if i want my wheel to move up say one whole octave i hold up and then just hit this key here so anything between those two keys and now i've got a if I wanted to go two octaves, and I wanted to go maybe down uh, two octaves, so I hold this, the down button, and go like this. So it's going to go down two octaves now. But we don't want that to be extreme. Let's put it back to. I mean, you could set it at like two semitones, three semitones, four. In fact, you could do a fifth. You know, go up seven semitones and you'll get a fifth. So it, it is really controllable. It's just not clearly obvious what to do first. Right, so let's set that back to. So again, we want to hold up two semitones down, two semitones. Now we're back in our normal pitch bend range, if you like. Let's do the same with the modulation. So we can cancel this and we're done. Modulation by default is set to an LFO, uh, I think, uh, sine wave. Like that. And it's that speed. So how do we fix this? It's exactly the same kind of thing. We hold shift, push the wheel all the way away from ourselves. And you'll notice different things will start to flash here now. So now what we can do is anything we do here affects this here. Okay, a good way to do this is to press key hold. If you've got a, a sound that's sustained, move your mod wheel so you're hearing the modulation. Let's adjust it. So now the modulation wheel has been assigned to those parameters. Top job. Easy. Again, pretty straightforward. Uh, if we reset our patch, like we do uh, this, we're back to our, you know, reset an initial patch. Or of course, you could just go back in and reset it exactly how you want. Right, let's quickly build a patch and then we can have a look at the effects and stuff like that and the arpeggios and things. So we'll build a patch that's going to be okay for arpeggio. I'm going to use a uh, pulse width modulation because we can have a look at the pulse width modulation and the pulse width. I'm sorry, pulse width and then pulse width modulation. Each wave has three variations. So. Mm. I, I really like that one. Let's, let's make this a little bit more reedy. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use tone copy. Now, this is another cool feature. Tone copy. Press tone one or the tone you want to copy and then press the second tone. And now if I switch this off. Tone two is an exact copy of tone one. However, we can now make further uh, adjustments to the parameters. So let's do that. Let's have that pulse width kind of right at the other end. And let's apply a little bit of pulse width modulation. And the, the pulse width modulation is controlled by this. I'm gonna set them back to zero as well. So only a little bit of pulse width, and then we can edit this one as well. So 
So now both of them, we've got that sound. To be fair, not very inspiring, but you know, there you go. So let's set up our filter now. Let's let's take our filter. Let's use a twenty. Let's leave twenty four dB, and I'm going to use a high pass filter. Some resonance. Key track. And then I could take sync off for the kickoff. And then we'll set up our amp envelope where we won't have a release. And it sounds like it has reverb on it, but it doesn't. And I'm going to do this for this one now as well. I'll set the amp envelope for both of them at the same time. And I'll put a little bit of So then we can add in, um, switch that one off, tone three, which is going to give us some like kind of bassy end on that sound. filtering on that so that doesn't really matter so drop the other two in now and now we've got a so let's add some reverb A bit of delay. We've got panning delay, but you won't hear that because it's mono. Well, let's do a bit of ah, a bit of phase. It might be nice. Yeah, it's lovely. Hi, gimbal. So for that patch is fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I mean, you you would want to spend a bit more time. nice okay 
So what we need to do is I'm going to hit right. And it, this it will you can now choose any patch to write this to in the user section. OK, but I'm going to write it to the patch we changed makes more sense. So you, if I press right again, I will just save it there. But you press the patch you want to save it to. Then you hit right and it's done. So if we go back here now to. Thanks, Joe. And then. Another quite nice. I mean, it's these mellowy twangy leads. Um, but that so that's that's basically how you save it nearly your effects. You have also distortions and fuzz and bit crush. So you choose your your effect you'll want to alter here. And then all the effects also have control two and control three. And again, you hold shift and access the effect there. So each effect does have more than one parameter, just it, it's holding shift. And it, it is in the manual what those extra parameters are as well. Okay, so let's turn off the, this. Okay, so let's see. Let's have a look at the, before we have a look at the ARPS, let's have a look at the phrase recorder. Okay, so. Enter phrase recorder by just pressing record and you start to get a count and you'll see these first four numbers will flash yeah they're the bars okay if i was to hold bank now you will see the first number is flashing that means that all data including all knob movements and everything you do will be recorded so that there, there are extra options for not recording say pitch bend or stuff like that but option one is to record everything. Again, if we stop this now, hit record, it'll flash. So we could record for one bar, two bars, three bars, four bars, all the way up to eight bars if we want to. Let's leave it at four. And as soon as I press play, we will get a counting. Okay. And I can record in time. Now it's not quantized. All right. So you, you do have to play it in time, but I need to record the two bars. Now, I've completely messed this up, so and we hold. stop your car near me right so to erase you go into record mode play mode and record mode so it's going to like standby and you you hold bank and number eight and that will erase everything that you've just recorded uh, let me just Make sure that they're gone. Right, I just need to open this for Peter. Okay, yeah, go and listen to Peter's stuff on the community. He's post if you're a Patreon, of course, that is. Okay, so again, we're going to stop this now. Hit record, four bars. And now what you can do is hit record again and now it's in rehearsal mode. Hit record. Now, 
you can't change the sound for any of the phrases or no matter how many phrases you've recorded they will all play back you can record up to eight phrases by the way but they will all play back at the sound that is selected or the sound that you're messing with at the time to save a phrase right how do we save a phrase we hit right hold right and you'll see that it's flashing at number seven there so i'm going to save this to number three and then hit right again and that phrase is set at number three now so if i go into that's going to change the sound so So we hold record and we see that that's phrase number two. Let's choose this. Or if I... Yeah. I must have saved it wrong. Anyway, doesn't matter. It's in the, it's in the book. And that's mostly how it works. Personally, I wouldn't use the phrase record mainly because it's not quantized and you're a bit limited because it's only recording what's kind of, it's all right if you're going to want to record a couple of bars of backing, I suppose. The arpeggiator is a lot more fun. So with this particular sound, if I turn arpeggiator on, default arpeggio is that. So we'll just press key hold. Select all three tones. shifting and set the pitch shift to central which is zero and it just adds something to the sound I don't know okay so you you're not actually selecting all right darling hello hello Hello, I'm home. Hi. Hello, I'm Hello. home. So you're not exactly selecting up, down, random. Um, Doug is the man, Stephen. What? What's that? Yeah, I mastered it for you, mate. I mastered it for you. Send me fees. Send me fees in, you know what I mean? <laughs> So here we go, right. You're not actually selecting up, down, random, alt, random, alt, up, down, that kind of thing. What it is, is it's all the basic ARPs are there, but they've programmed sequences of arpeggios instead of kind of like, uh, you know, thingy. So these are really cool. So check it out. This is what you do. Hold, arpe hold arpeggiator. Hold bank. And we're in bank one, and we've got up to we, a, a, H, A to H, so now we're in bank two, so we could go up, bank two, hop. and now all we need to do is select a different, without holding the bank, just hold arpeggios, and then select different arpeggios. And if I go off that, I can change my patch. So, I'm just going to... What bank am I on here? Right, bank two. Maybe bank four. 
can't remember. There's a, a oh, that'll do. That'll do for the arps. Hi, Jamie. I think I'll just set. Up a quick acidy card kind of thing. a few hundred Stevens <laughs> and it would sound great Tons of different arpeggios, and then you can choose a different bank of arpeggios. So let's see, arpeggio bank two and arpeggio number one. <laughs> I changed the sound by mistake, by the way. There are 64 different arpeggio types that you can play with, which is really cool. And that one thing, uh, the thing that I, I did forget to mention, excuse me, was the uh, pitch mod as well. And then I pretty much covered everything it does. And then you're only limited by your epic skills as a, as a programmer then. So let's find a sound. Bank one. Bank one. Is, is, is this is this an is this an arpeggiator battle, Asdi? 
I've said this has got 64, so you've come back with, on Yamaha, I have 128 arpeggios. On my Yamaha Modi XX SD, I have 10,000 arpeggios. <laughs> Was <laughs> excuse me. So, uh, what's this? Is on ring mod? We don't know. Nah. A nice sound. Oh, but be back. I think it. It's just, uh, it's just a little synth, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know what you need, my multi timbrel. It's got three oscillators. You can play at the same time. It is what it is. I have a, I have a thing, right? I just, I, it thinks me up. You know, where people go, is it, is it this or is it that? Has it got that? Has it got that? Who cares? If you like the sound of it, buy the synth. If you don't like it, don't buy it. Same thing for apps, really. Hi, Volker. Anyway, so basically I've, I've gone through the entire synth, um, except for the pitch envelope, which is very cool. So if we do a uh, little pitches, let envelope depth, right? Let's put it up a little bit. And so we can hear what the pitch envelope is doing. So quick attack and then quick delay back down to nothing. So if we, so this is kind of a keyboardy sound, we'll take the delay off it and we'll turn it into more of a pad type sound. Need any of this? We're going to leave that at zero, so that's irrelevant. So it. So let's now apply low to this but we'll also apply a, a, a long decay as well so it'll go rise up for ages and ages and sound really cool and then it'll drop back down again so uh, let's turn the volume down a little bit is cool and then we could go really mad Yeah. <laughs> 
And I think guys pretty much that is the whole thing. We've done it, we've done everything. <clears throat> also runs on batteries, remarkable, isn't it? <laughs> For anybody who's interested in tonight's live stream is for the new captivity pack by James, well, but Jim Edward Cosby for the IVCS3, which is just brill, brill. So we're we'll having a look at that. That's tonight. Thanks, Asdi. That's tonight. Guys, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you can join me tonight when we look at the uh, <clears throat> captivity pack. And, and also, if you're interested in buying that pack, um, it's on sale at the moment, I think at half price. So if you've got IVCS3, the pack is normally 4 99 I think. So you can get it for, I, I don't know, £2.50 or something, I guess. Um, so, yeah, check it out. Check it out. But there is 256 patches and you know Jim is a genius when it comes to programming the IVCS3. A genius. He knows everything about that synth. Everything. Anyway, brilliant. Nice to see you, Vulcan. Nice. That was cool beans. Uh, oh yeah, but it, can it make a super saw? Let's see, Asti. Can it make a super saw? Cancel right. Initial patch. Waveform, super saw. That has three super saw waveforms, one for each. So yeah, it does super saws. It's seven. It's actually seven. It's seven saw tooths stacked per per, per each one. So if we tone copy. Uh, this to this and then tone copy this to this now we've got epic stack which is really loud and distorty so so you've got 21 21 waveforms 21 <laughs> right okay Guys, I'll let you say ta to each other for a few minutes. Top job, cool beans. Hope to see you later. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. And yeah, be cool. See you later. <laughs>